Now let's try another problem. This problem actually is in my AP um, PDF file that I sent. It's question 20. It's an interesting also uh, exercise. And it is, as you can see now here, simply the question states that we have this bench. And on top of the bench, two actually two blocks were placed. This is block B. And on top of it, there is another block, which is block A. Both A and B are connected by a string. A light and extensible string. This string goes through a pulley there, which is also light uh, uh, pulley. And uh, this that surface between B and the bench is frictionless. So this one is frictionless surface. Now the whole system is attached to another mass there, which is called C. And also it goes uh, through another pulley there. And that is my string. So that's the scenario. Now between A and B, there is friction exists. First of all, this system is at rest. When you let C go, the system does not move. And that question is asking us to part A, draw a free body force diagram for both object A and for object B. So let's try to do first the free body force diagram for object A. And let me do it there, this would help. So that is A. And then we will try to do it for object B. Now, what do we have acting on A? A is being pulled by gravity, so we don't have a force of gravity, which is MAG. By the way, the masses given were MA, MB, and MG. And also, as we said, there is friction exists. So the Gaussian static friction is mu s between A and B, and the Gaussian kinetic friction between A and B is also mu k. These are given. Now, what else do we have acting on A in addition to pull of gravity? We have a push by B on A, which is upward. And let's call this push now Fn1. That is the normal contact force or the push by B on A goes upward. At the same time, as you can see from the string there, the object is being, object A is being pulled by object B through that string. So we do have a tension and let's call it T1. Now, the movement to be expected, if it moves, will be to the left. So we do have friction here acting to the right. And, or I mean, to the other side or opposite side. And let's call this one F1. Now, what about B? We do have, of course, a pull of gravity acting on B downward. Let's call it MBG. We have a push by the table, let's call it F and two, the table pushes B upward. Since B pushes pulls A, A will both be according to Newton's third law. So we'll have another force and this should be T1. Now at the same time, B is being pulled by C the opposite direction, so that is T2. What else do we have? We still have F and one. What is F and one? It's simply push by A on B. We said at the beginning that A experienced a push by B upward, and hence A will act on B downward. That is again, which is the law. For each action, there is a reaction equal magnitude and opposite direction. So simply these are the two 
three body force diagrams for this, uh, you know, the two objects A and B. And that is the first part of the quotient part A, which is A1 and A2. Now back to the same question, part A, as we said, we've done it, three body force diagram of each of, or each of the two blocks, block A and block B, and it is as shown on the diagram. Now part B is asking us about the, the maximum mass MC, this is the mass MC right there. The mass MC that would actually keep the system at rest. So simply, you keep on adding or changing the mass C until you reach a, a, a limit or you reach a moment where the system is just about to move. So that's the maximum mass required. Of course, your answer should be in terms of the what was given in the question. Or so simply, your answer should be in terms of um, a and B and C, Gaussian static friction between A and B, or kinetic friction, G, uh, or G. So, or any physical quantities that are appropriate, in this case, it could be G. So, that's what you are expected to find with you. Now, let's go back to this case or this system here. If we look at this as one system, how would we find? The maximum mass required. For this scenario, I would need to draw also a free body force diagram for C. Sorry. So that is my C. What do we have? We have the weight. acting downward, which is mg. And we do have also upward attention t, which we named it t2. Simply, mc equals mass of b and mass of b equals mc. Action and reaction is just net load. And since this is a light smooth friction this pulley, the tension on both sides is equal to. Now, how would we solve or apply? That is what we need to do now. If we try to apply Newton's second law for each of the three objects, which equations will it have? If we apply it, applying Newton's second law, let's do it for block C. What would we get? We will get mg minus T2 equals since the system is at rest, it's just about to move, where we're talking about the maximum mass, where it's still at rest, it should be equal to zero. So that's my first equation. Or in another word, mg is equal to T2. Now, if I look at B, what do I have here? Look at B, we have T2, of course, uh, there is one force we forgot to add previously, which is F there. And it should be same as F1. That is the force of friction between these two blocks, uh, A and B. So it should have been added from video one. So now T2 minus T1 minus friction equals to also zero. Net force acting on this system is zero. Why is friction to the backward, or to the right, friction opposite motion? Or if you look at it from other perspective, it's the reaction of the force there. These are two, the two forces that are in action. Now let's look at, sorry, A. What do we have for A? 
we have T1 minus F1 equal to zero, or simply T1 equals F1. So if I substitute T1 into substituting, substituting T1 into, let's say, call this one equation two, this is one, two, two. what do we get? We get that T2 equals two F. And at the same time, from this equation one, we know that T2 is equal to mg. And what is friction when we reach the maximum? Friction let me write it there. Friction would be equals mu s fn1. That is my friction here. And hence, mg, which is equals to friction, would be equal to 2 mu s, and fn is ma g. And hence, for this scenario, I can find the mass m, which is required to keep this system the maximum mass, where the system will stay at rest. Of course, g with g cancel, so I can remove these from here and end up with this answer, where the mass is equal to two US U S times MA. That is the maximum mass needed to keep this system in at rest and in up moving down in state motion in the state motion. So now the setup for this question has been modified. As you can see, we do have a mass C, which is the same mass previously. Block B still exists, but instead of block A, we replace block A by or with a clay on top of block B. The students investigating or conducting this experiment applied the Newton's second law and eventually were able to come up with the equation shown where the acceleration of block C is equal to mass of C divided by the total mass applied by G. The total mass of the system, mass total was given to be five or measured to be 5.0 kilograms. Now students conducted this investigation in order to find, try to find a value for G, acceleration due to gravity. So what the students did simply is every time they move parts or pieces of the clay and place it on top of C. So if you look at the system, the total mass is still the same as the system. The total mass is five kilograms. All we did is we redistributed or we rearranged the distribution of the mass. And they kept doing that and then eventually came up with the table. Uh, we can, uh, the question actually simply asked us after they, they provided us with the data and then we were asked to plot the, the graph itself. I will let me quickly um, share the data. So, sorry, let's assume that we do have the graph, all the dots were provided, and then you were asked to draw a best fit line. So we draw a best fit line that goes to these points, and uh, that best line, of course, is related to this. Uh, what do we have on the x-axis? We have the mass mc in kilograms. And what do we have? What do we have on the y-axis? On the y-axis, we will have acceleration of C in meters per second squared. As we said, the mass of C keeps on changing based on the removal of the clay from one part to another or one side to the other. Now, how would we use this graph to find G? That's what with the purpose of this experiment. Simply, if I skip, if I find the slope, I will be able to find G. As you can see from the equation, AC, equals uh, mc times g 
divided by m total. M total did not change, which is five kilograms. We're trying to find E there. And this is my Y. This one is my X. This should be my slope. So based on the graph given, the data given, I'll find the slope, and then I will be able to find a numerical value for T. That is the part uh, C of the questions. So the best fit line and then finding T. Also, the question is saying, and I'm reading the question, if the mass of the pulley in part C is significant, as you remember at the beginning of the question, we assumed that this pulley is massless, light pulley. And now they're saying, if this mass is significant, it does exist, it's a significant, it has a significant value, the mass. And the question is asking us, would the experimental value of G be greater than, less than, or equal to the value calculated in part C? Again, they're asking us whether the experimental value will be less than or greater than or equal to the value in part C, which is the value we just found from the graph. So what do you think? Let's look at this one. If we include the mass of the pulley. That means then the total mass is getting greater. And hence, my acceleration there will be less. I'm doing the calculation now. I'm just substituting the total mass, which is greater now. And accordingly, if I do the calculations, my AC will be less. Hence, my G should be less than the experimental value. So if I do use the calculation, I will discover that it's different than the experimental value, simply because my calculation of the equation there was based on the assumption at the beginning uh, that is a mass test, and now it's changed. Now, the other part of the question, which is interesting, saying, saying that another group of students repeated the same experiment, but with a little bit different. So what they did, instead of removing the clay from here, to there from top of B to C, they remove the clay and throw it away. So the question simply is saying that, and sorry, again, let me read it. A different group of students repeats the experiment, but instead of moving clay from block B to block C, they just remove, as I said, the piece of small amount of clay from block B and then they set it aside or throw it away. And uh, the equation now is still applies the equation, which is this one, AC equals MC divided by M total plus pi by G, it still applies to the new, well, to the new setup or experiment. In order to provide a straight line graph that can be used to determine the experimental value of G, what two quantities should the students now graph? So as you notice here, what did we graph? We graphed the value of AC versus MC. Now that was for the previous part, which is C, I guess, C2 or C1, however. Now in part D, we're removing it, we're throwing away. What do you think the values we should, if I look at my equation again, I'm using the same exact equation, MC divided by M total, multiplied by G. So what do you think which quantities we should plot? Now, as you can see here, is MC changing? What happening? We're taking the clay away, but we're no more placing it on MC. We're throwing it away or putting it or setting it aside. So that means that MC is remains constant. And what is changing here is my total mass. It gets less and less and less. Hence, the best way to do it, if we rearrange the equation, this is MC, which is a constant, divided by exertion due to gravity, which is also a constant, multiplied by one over M total. So what do you think we should graph? What would yield to a straight line? This is my Y, this is a constant, and this should be my X. So you can sketch AC, acceleration of block C versus the one over M total or versus MC over M total. Both gives you the, yeah, both are correct. But the difference is what does then the slope represent? 
like you present in C over G as shown, or if you put it like this, if you rearrange the equation, let me see if it can. If I do arrange, I'm not sure. Yes, let me put it here. One over G times MC over NT total. So if I sketch this as my Y, and this is my X, this would be my slope. Okay, sorry, I think. Sorry, this should be there. And this is G. Yes. So it could be MCG or it is G only. Depends on what two quantities would you select. And if you like, so can watch it. And that's for this question. As I said at the beginning, it's in my AP free uh, response questions for unit two. And also, you can find the question and the solutions on K.